Pokemon fans! I'm Andrew from Poketopia. And I'm Professor K from the Pokemon Evolutionaries. And today we're going to be covering the leaks of Phantom Gate that were released last night. There are a lot of interesting cards in this set that will bring an entirely new dynamic into the format. So let's just jump right into it and take a look at the cards. Absolutely. So first off, we're just going to take a quick look here, uh, go over all the different scans and things like that. And we're going to start off with Venonat, which is a grass type Pokemon, 50 HP. Basic, uh, it's just got one attack, which does 10 damage, and uh, flip a coin if heads, your active Pokemon is now paralyzed. And now we're taking a look at Venomoth, uh, grass, uh, 90 HP, and it's attack Vertigo Wind. For one grass energy during your opponent's turn, whenever uh, your opponent tries to play a trainer card, your opponent must flip a coin. If tails, your opponent cannot use the effect of the card, and the card is discarded. Now that's really, really powerful, because since that is in your Pokemon's attack, it will work with with Victory Star to where if it uh, ends up not in your favor, you can make your opponent reflip. Um, other than that, it's attack, Venom Scale for Grass 2 Colorless, uh, 50 damage, Poison and Confuse, nothing really special. Yeah, I think if it was colorless only, like a double colorless, kind of like Excel Gore, it would have had a lot more use, but the second attack, because you need two energy attachments, just isn't quite as good. Okay, so next we'll go ahead and take a look at Yanma here real quick. Uh, for a double colorless, you can use Air Slash, 30 damage, discard an energy attached to the Pokemon. It's got 70 HP, which is pretty good for a basic, but other than that, it just really doesn't have anything else going for it. Um, and then we have Yan Mega, uh, 110 HP for one grass. Windfall, shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw six cards. Then for three colorless, it's 50 plus damage. If the Pokemon is switched from the bench during this turn, it does 50 more damage. Nothing real special there. No, but that first attack really reminds me of Tornado CX, the plasma one, that windfall. Same attack, just for one grass instead of a colorless. All right, so next we'll look here at Sawaddle. Uh, again, grass type Pokemon, 50 HP, basic. For one grass energy, nap heals the Pokemon's damage by 20. But interestingly enough, even though it's called Nap, it's not putting you to sleep. And then we've got Wormhole here, which does 20 damage for grass and colorless. All right, and now we have uh, Swadloon, uh, 70 HP. Uh, for one grass, it does protect, flip coin if heads prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to your opponent's active Pokemon to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. And then for two grass and a colorless charge does 40 damage. It has nothing else going for it besides that. Nope, definitely requires a lot of energy attachments. But that will bring us to Levani here, grass type Pokemon, 130 HP, uh, stage two, coordinate, choose up to two Pokemon on your bench that don't have tools attached to them, and for each Pokemon you choose, search your deck for a Pokemon tool card and attach to them. Fairly useful, just not on a stage two, uh, of course, and then the attack here for two grass and a colorless, Leaf Storm does 70 damage and heals 20 from all your grass Pokemon. Um, so next we have Carablast, 50 HP, basic Pokemon. For a colorless, it does Peck, which is an interesting attack for Carablast. Uh, 10 damage, and then Grass and Colorless Headbutt, 20 damage. Nothing special at all. Nope. I think it's very interesting with the peck attack as well. All it's got is a horn on its head. It doesn't even have anything to peck with. So, <laughs> <laughs> next we got Fletchender here, which is a stage 1, uh, evolves from Fletchling. Uh, 80 HP, fire type Pokemon. It also has peck, but at least this one has a beak. <laughs> <laughs> and for 2 fire and a Colorless Flare does 60 damage. Then we have Talonflame, and oh boy, do things go downhill from here. Uh, it's 130 HP. Um, for one fire, it does Acrobat, 30 plus damage, flip two coins. This attack does 30 plus for each head set you get. And then the worst attack in history, in my opinion, um, Jet Shoot. For two fire and a colorless, it does 120 damage, but during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is increased by 40 before applying weakness and resistance. That's just disgusting. It is. It's awful. It's like the fire type close combat. That's really what it does. <laughs> yeah, just awful. Okay, so next here we've got Litleo, another basic fire type Pokemon, 60 HP, uh, and does Roar for a colorless, which forces your opponent to switch his or her active Pokemon with one of his or her benched Pokemon, and Kindling for a fire and a colorless does 20 damage. Uh, it's got less HP than the Flash Fire Litleo, so I can't even see this as a replacement for Pyrodex anyway. And now we have Pyroar, which is very not good compared to its predecessor. It has an ability Flare Command. Once during your turn before your attack, you may discard one fire energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and switch it with your opponent's active Pokemon, which is a pretty decent ability by itself, but eh, I just don't see it being used too much. And then it's attack, which is very bad. Three fire, one colorless, Inferno uh, tackle, 110 damage, and then it does 30 to itself. It's kind of funny because if this was uh, like Genesect, it'd be Red Signal and actually be 
red. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it just has nothing else going for it other than its artwork. The artwork is pretty cool okay. on it. Yeah, it does look really cool. That's one thing that I got to say about Phantom Gate and Fury's Fist, Fist combined. Their artwork has really stepped up quite a bit. All right, so next we're going to take a look here at, at uh, some water type Pokemon. We'll start off with Krabby, 70 HP, basic Pokemon for one water, does pinch for 10 damage, and three waters, Crab Hammer for 50. Ugh, just that's an ugly attack, and Kingler doesn't help it. Um, has uh, 100 HP uh, for one water, it does uh, Guard Claw. 20 damage during your opponent's turn. Reduce any damage done to this Pokemon by 20. Not bad, but not good. And then Crab Hammer for four water does 100 damage. Did somebody say Blastoise? <laughs> yeah. Even with Blastoise, that's not something you want to waste all that energy on. No, not for 100. <laughs> we'll go here to our next water type Pokemon, Totodile. Water Pokemon, obviously. Uh, 60 HP, basic Pokemon. For one water energy, Fury Swipes does 10 damage. Uh, you flip three coins and does 10 damage times the number of hits. And then next we have Krokonov, 80 HP. Uh, it has a, uh, for water and colorless, it does splash for 30 damage. Um, and then a water and two colorless, it does crunch for 40 damage. Flip a coin, if heads, choose one energy card attached to your opponent's active Pokemon and discard it. And here's another interesting card. We'll take a look here at Feraligator. For Alligator is kind of cool for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, its first attack is Water and two Colorless. Destructive Whirlpool does 60 damage, and you flip a coin until you get Tails. For each Heads, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. But the attack that makes it a little bit interesting and has a little bit of synergy with Dust Noir, uh, kind of like the Poliwhirl from the previous set in Furious Fist, uh, for two Water and, t and a double Colorless energy essentially, you can do 80 damage, but if your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters on it, the attack does 80 more damage. So essentially, if you're able to hit your opponent's Pokemon with one attack, and then move everything around with Dust Noir, and put damage on each of your opponent's Pokemon, you're hitting for 160 damage every turn, at least until Feraligator is knocked out. And I mean, that's a Pokemon that four energy is definitely worth it, because 160 damage is very powerful. Next we have Finneon, water, uh, 50 HP, basic Pokemon. For water, it does pound for 10 damage. I'd like to know what it's pounding with with those tiny fins, but <laughs> yeah. Oh well. All right, so we'll go into the evolution of Finneon here. We'll go to Luminion for uh, one colorless energy, neon sign. Search your deck for two Pokemon and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. And for a water and a colorless, Water Pulse does 30 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Next we have Frillish, 70 HP, and for one water energy, Confuse Ray, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Simple enough. Can't get more straightforward than that, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, so next we'll take a look at Jellicent here, uh, the evolution of Frillish, 100 HP. For one water energy, Meddling, choose three energy cards from your opponent's discard pile and attach them to your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. If you're punishing your opponent's Pokemon with something like Leafeon and Energy Crush. I guess that's one strategy you could use in that sense. And then for a Water and Double Colorless, Entangled Splash does 50 damage and does 10 more damage for each energy card attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Hey, look at that! There's your Synergy. 50 damage plus 10 more, and you're attaching three at least the first turn. If you can survive a second hit and attach for a second turn, well, you can do a little bit more damage. Now we have Alamomola. That just is a tongue twister. <laughs> um, 100 HP, it's a basic. Um, for a water, deep dive, heal 30 damage from this Pokemon, then switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. And then for water and three colorless, Surf does 80 damage. And uh, now we are moving on to our first EXs. Manetric EX, lightning type, uh, 170 HP. For one colorless, it does rush off. Um, let me move this off to the sign real quick. Uh, rush off does 20 damage. Choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and do 20 to it. That's not uh, that bad at all for one colorless. But then we move on to its really good attack, Laser ass uh, Assault Laser. Uh, 60 plus damage. If your opponent's active Pokemon has any Pokemon tools attached to it, this does 60 more. 120 for two? That's very, very good. Yeah, it's just a very nice card. And then Mega Manetric EX is also a very good card. Um, it has 210 HP, which is the lowest HP for Mega Evolutions, but is still a very beefy Pokemon. Um, 
and it's attack Turbo Bolt for a lightning and a colorless, 110 damage, and then you choose two basic energy from your discard pile and attach them to one of your benched Pokemon. Oh, and I should also mention it has a zero retreat cost as well. It's just a overall good Pokemon. I mean, 110 for two and then energy acceleration onto all of your other Pokemon. Even if this thing does get knocked out, you're going to have something else ready to go with the energy acceleration that it has. Yep, absolutely. Giving up two prizes with that kind of energy acceleration, three attachments for turn is really good. And of course, going back to um, the main Netric EX, uh, the Assault Laser actually has some synergy with a couple of tool cards in this set that we'll get to uh, down below here a little bit later on because of the new dynamic where we've got uh, tool card F that you attach to your opponent's Pokemon. So you could actually attach forcefully a tool card to your opponent's Pokemon and force main Manetric EX to do an additional 60 damage that way. Yep, and that is very, very sinister to do. <laughs> yes, that it is. It is quite evil. But then again, people who played uh, the Malamar troll decks were not very kind either. <laughs> So, all right, well, now we'll move on here and take a look at Pachirisu here. Obviously, a very popular Pokemon in recent times, given its performance in uh, the World Championships. It's no surprise here. You see it with its own card, and it actually has a pretty interesting attack set. We're looking at a Lightning Pokemon here, obviously. 70 HP, Surprise Sticker, 10 damage, and then until the end of your turn, your opponent's active Pokemon that was hit by this attack has its weakness changed to Lightning. And then Zap for one Lightning and a Colorless. Uh, 20 damage, flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 30 more damage. Yeah, if this gets used at all, it's definitely for that surprise sticker. Definitely an interesting attack and definitely has great synergy with any lightning type Pokemon that's a decent attacker. Make it weak to main electric and attack for that 120, make it 240 and knock out anything in the, in the format. Next up, we have Joltik, 30 HP. For a lightning, it does gnaw, 10 damage. And then for two colorless, night march, 20 times damage. This does 20 times damage for each Pokemon that has night march attack in your discard pile. Okay, well, we'll look at the evolution here. Uh, Galvantula, lightning type Pokemon, 80 HP. Spider Trap, choose one of your opponent's benched Pokemon and switch it with his or her active Pokemon. The new active Pokemon is now confused. That's kind of cool, being able to just bring up something and automatically confuse it. And for a Lightning and two Colorless, Electric Net does 60 damage. The defending Pokemon can't retreat to your, your opponent's next turn. The only thing that I don't like about that first attack is when you bring up something that's confused, it can still retreat without having to do anything else. It doesn't have to flip or anything like it would with sleep. Next, we're moving on to Helioptile, uh, 60 HP. And for a Lightning and a Colorless, Tail Wrap, 10 times damage. Flip two coins, this does 10 times the number of heads. Okay, so Heliolisk is the evolution here. 90 HP, Lightning-type Pokemon. Pound for 30 damage, and for lightning and a colorless, Valavola Spark. That is a very cool sounding name. Yeah. 30 damage, uh, you may discard as many lightning energy from your Pokemon as you like, and it does 30 damage times the number of lightning energy that you discarded. So this card is essentially a mini Rayquaza EX. It's a stage one, it's not an EX, so it can be kind of cool, it's just not going to take hits very well, unfortunately. Right. So now we'll move on to, well, the mascot of my channel, actually, Gengar. Gengar EX here. Uh, Psychic type, 170 HP, basic Pokemon. Night attack, place three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon for a single colorless energy. And Dark Corridor, for a Psychic and two colorless, 60 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. Now, the obvious synergy here is going to be with Trevenant. Trevenant being able to put up the item lock, while Gengar hits and goes back to the bench, floats down on Trevenant, and you can just keep cycling it around back and forth, dealing damage and keeping that item lock in play as long as possible. This is basically the new Excel Gore, which I think is awesome. Not to mention, the way that this card looks is just incredible. One of the best design cards out of any of the most recent sets, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt, they really did Gengar some justice here. And here we'll go on to its Mega Evolution, Mega Gengar EX, 220 HP, Phantom Gate. Obviously, uh, the main focus of each set in Japan, whatever attack that is, is what they name the set after. So, Phantom Gate in Japan does Psychic Energy and two colorless. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. It's, it's a lot more like Zoark using foul play, but it actually costs an extra psychic energy. And now we have Zubat, 50 HP, and for a colorless skill dive, um, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 10 damage to that Pokemon. 
Um, then we have Golbat, 70 HP. Um, with the ability Sneaky Bite, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may choose one of your opponent's Pokemon and place two damage counters on it. And then it has Barrage Fly for a colorless, does 10 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon, which is pretty nice in my opinion. And then of course it only gets better when evolving into Crobat, Abrupt Bite. When you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may choose one of your opponent's Pokemon and place three damage counters on it. So if you're able to keep this thing in play long enough to evolve, just simply for evolving, you're doing 50 total damage between Golbat and Crobat. And then, of course, you got Skill Dive here, choosing one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 30 damage to that Pokemon. So everything here is about placing damage counters, which obviously works very well with a Dust Noir type of deck. And interestingly enough, there is a card that will allow all three of these Pokemon to attack for free that we'll get to uh, further on down the line. So next up, we'll take a look here at Wobbuffet, 110 HP, Psychic type, basic Pokemon, with the ability Perseverance Wall. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, all Pokemon in play in each player's hand and in each player's discard pile have no abilities excluding Psychic type Pokemon, which is really kind of cool. It makes it almost like Garbodor in the sense that, you know, shutting down all the abilities, but only while it's active. So you don't have to put the tool card on it and it's not a stage one Pokemon, it's basic, but it's only good while it's in the active spot and at 110 HP, it probably won't last all that long. So it's only attack here is uh, psychic damage for a psychic and a colorless, 10 damage times 10 for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. Next we have Golpin, 60 HP uh, for psychic, poison gas, uh, flip a coin if heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, and then sludge bomb for a psychic into colorless, 30 damage. Damage. Okay, and of course it evolves into Swalot here, 110 HP, Poison Gas, 30 damage. For a Psychic and a Colorless, your opponent's active Pokemon is automatically poisoned. And for a Psychic and two Colorless, Swallow does 50 damage, plus 50 more if your opponent's active Pokemon's remaining HP is fewer than Swalot's. Uh, next we have Muna, 70 HP. Uh, for a Psychic, it does see through. Your opponent reveals his or her hand. And then for a Psychic and a Colorless, double headbutt, 20 times damage, flip a coin. This attack does 20 damage times the number of heads. Uh, Musharna, a uh, memorable dream for a Psychic Energy. Shuffle three cards from your discard pile back into your deck. And Dream Dance for a Psychic and a Colorless, 30 damage. And both active Pokemon are asleep. Next we have Lit. Wick, 50 HP. Uh, for a Psychic, knock down uh, 10 plus damage. Flip a coin. If heads, this attack does 10 more damage. Litwick evolves into Lampant, 80 HP. Curse of Drops. Uh, for one Psychic Energy, place three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, previous uh, Lampant and Chandelure being able to place damage counters that way. And for a Psychic and a double colorless energy, Night March, 20 damage times 20 more for each Pokemon that has Night March attack in your discard pile. Well, hey, here we go. Here's a partner for Joltik. They both have Night March attack. Oh, I didn't even notice that. No, I didn't either, till just now. Yeah, it still probably isn't going to be that good, but hey, no. at least it does have synergy with something. Yep. Um, and then next we have Chandelure, which I think is really cool. The artwork's fantastic on it, by the way. It's uh, 130 HP and it has the ability Fainting Spell. Once during your opponent's turn, if this Pokemon would be knocked out by damage from an attack, you may flip a coin. If heads, the opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out. I think that is uh, pretty good. Um, I mean, it's a 50-50 shot, but hey, 50-50 uh, chance of having your opponent's Pokemon knocked out as well is definitely worth it. And then it's attack, uh, Curse of Drops, uh, Psychic into Colorless, but six damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. That ability there is really cool just because it's a lot like Parish Song. All right, so we got Pumpkaboo here uh, for one Psychic Energy, Clash does 10 damage, and hey, there's more Night March, 20 damage times 20 more. For a Pokemon that has Night March attack in the discard pile, so even further synergy. Um, next, we'll take a look at Gorgeist here, 100 HP, of awesome Pumpkaboo. The ability Big Pumpkin is the only thing that makes this card really kind of cool. Whenever this Pokemon has a Grass Energy attached to it, its po the Pokemon's maximum HP is 200. So really, the only use I see this is going to be as a big wall, a non EX wall. Um, of course, you know back when Black Kyrim and White Kyrim had their uh, corresponding A specs. Uh, you had the one that would increase the maximum HP to 300, so it's kind of similar in that sense, except the Grass Energy is this card's A spec. Its only attack is Horror Note, and it's horrible. 10 damage <laughs> times 10 more damage um, for the number of cards in your opponent's hand. So unless your opponent has just Chorused for 10, it's not worth it for 3 energy. I just don't see it. Yeah, just not very good. Uh, then next we have Ligar, 60 HP. For 2 colorless, continuous rock throw. 20 uh, times damage. Flip a 
coin until you get tails. This attack does 20 damage times the number of heads. And then we have Gliscor, which is actually a very cool card. For one fighting energy, it does joint bind 20 damage. During your opponent's turn, your opponent cannot attach an energy card from his or her hand to your opponent's active Pokemon that was hit by this attack. Now, throw a strong energy on there and a muscle band that's doing 60 for one energy, and then you lock your opponent out of attaching energy to their active Pokemon. And more often than not, their active Pokemon is probably going to be the Pokemon they want to attack with, unless it's very early on in the game and they got a bad hand. So definitely a very cool card in my opinion, and I think we might be seeing this played a little bit. And uh, then its other attack is a fighting in uh, two colorless poison jab, six damage, flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is not poisoned. I really, really think that this is going to be quite an interesting card in the format. It goes along with the recent fighting sets for sure. All right, so we'll take a look here at Rog and Rolla, fighting type Pokemon, basic, 70 HP. For two fighting, Tackle does 30 damage, which is not good. Uh, now we have Baldor, uh, 90 HP. For one fighting, Core Heal, discard one fighting energy attached to this Pokemon and feel 50 damage from this Pokemon. Let's take a look at Power Gem for three fighting, 60 damage. Just awful. <laughs> yeah. I can't see detaching three energy for anything less than 100 damage in any way, shape, or form. So we'll take a look at Gigalith here, which uh, has a very cool ability. If this Pokemon has no damage, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 50. Now this has some synergy with Dust Noir from Flash Fire. Not from Boundaries Cross, but Flash Fire. Due to Dust Noir's ability, being able to take damage counters off of any of your other Pokemon and place it onto Dust Noir. So if your opponent attacks Gigalith and hits it for, let's just say, 60 damage, it's reduced by 50, it only does 10. Um, if you need to, you can move that damage to Dust Noir and all of a sudden it has no damage again, so that your opponent is still only hitting you for 10 damage on a 60 damage attack. Just being able to reduce that much damage makes it a serious wall. And that's about all it is, considering that it's... Uh, only attack, even though it says G, that's actually supposed to be F, for 3 fighting energy and a colorless over smash does 60 damage and during your turn, it, the attack of course is over smash, not over turn, over smash does 40 more damage, so you could hit for 100 at the most, just still too expensive. Um, next we have Murkrow, 60 HP, oh and this is our first dark Pokemon as well, Assault. 10 plus damage, flip a coin, if heads this does 10 more damage, and then for a dark and two colorless, wing attack does 30. So its evolution here is Honchkrow, which fortunately is a slightly better Pokemon. 100 HP, dark type, uh, for one darkness energy, Hypno Wave, 20 damage, and your active opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Now what makes that interesting is that if you can get a double colorless attached to it on the next turn, for the double colorless and a darkness energy, Nightmare Dance does 60 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep, this attack does 60 more damage. So essentially you're hitting for 120 damage instead of just 60 for 3 energy, it's not terrible. Next we have Poochiana, 60 HP, for a colorless it does bite for 10, and for a darkness and a colorless, jump on 30 damage, flip a coin, if tails this does nothing. I hate attacks like that. Yeah, it seems like there's been a lot of Pokemon cards that have the attack jump on. Alright, its evolution here is Mightyena, 90 HP, um, for a darkness and a colorless, it does bite for 30 damage, flip a coin, if heads, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, and for a darkness and a, a uh, double colorless, darkness fang does 80 damage. Um, next we have Spirit Tomb, uh, 70 HP, for colorless, beam cancel, 10 damage. During your opponent's next turn, he or she cannot play a Pokemon card from his or her hand to evolve the Pokemon hit by this attack, which is definitely a very interesting thing. It seems like it, they're making cards that are trying to prevent your opponent from doing anything, really. Um, and then for a darkness and a colorless, confuse ray, 30 damage, flip a coin, if heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Weakness none, resistance none. Pretty cool. Yep. Of course, with that beam cancel, the only card that I see it having much synergy with is going to be Pyroar, and that's only if you can immediately switch out of it after you use the attack. So you know, overall, it just doesn't do a whole lot of good. No. So we'll move on to Purloin, uh, 50 HP, dark type Pokemon. For one darkness, fake out, 10 damage, flip a coin if heads. The opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. And then that evolves into Lyperd, 90 HP. Uh, for darkness, sweet biting, 10 damage. 
um, during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to uh, by the opponent's active Pokemon to this Pokemon is reduced by 60, which is a pretty good amount. And then uh, for two darkness, uh, Machma, 50 damage, the attack's damage isn't affected by resistance. Now we're moving on to Malamar EX, one of the best cards in this set, I believe. Uh, 170 HP, ability Powerful Hypnosis. Once during your turn before your attack, when you attach an energy card from your hand to this Pokemon, you may use this ability. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. And then it has the uh, attack Calamari Max, which is very much like uh, Vanillux's Chill Max. Um, for a darkness and a colorless, it does 60 times damage. Flip a coin for each energy attached to this Pokemon. This attack does 60 damage times the number of heads. I don't really like attacks that do uh, damage times the amount of coin flips, but run it with Victory Star, and if you have at least three energy on it and you do manage to get all three heads, that's knocking out pretty much everything. And uh, that ability is pretty great in itself, and it has a good synergy with Honchkrow as well. And it does, being able to put it to sleep, and then Honchkrow will attack for 120 damage. Not mm -hmm. bad. Okay, so we have Heatran here. For only the second time in Pokemon TCG history, it is a Metal-type Pokemon. 130 HP for a Metal and Double Colorless Steel Drop does 40 damage, and if there's a Stadium in play, it does 40 more damage. And for two Metal and two Colorless, Steam Blast does 130 damage, but you must discard one energy attached to this Pokemon. Uh, it's just a little bit too expensive for my liking, but it is cool to see Heatran in a set as a Metal-type. And then now we have a Scavalier that evolution for Care Blast we saw early on. Uh, for... Uh, uh, metal energy does break through 20 damage uh, discard a random card from your opponent's hand and then uh, metal and two colorless spiral rush does 60 plus damage flip a coin until you get heads this does 30 more damage for each head all right so we'll take a look here at floor just ex at 160 hp it uh it's a pretty weak pokemon ex uh, at least you know most of them have 170 or 180 but it's not the weakest obviously with some of the ones in the previous uh sets but still nonetheless uh floor just could be better for a Fairy Energy, lead, search your deck for a Supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Um, I mean, that ends your turn, so you can't even use the Supporter card. Essentially, you're using Skyla to get a Supporter card, is what you're doing here, except it's an attack instead of using a Supporter to get a Supporter. And for a Fairy Energy and a Colorless, Bright Garden does 20 damage, times the number of Grass and Fairy Pokemon you have in play. Um, I feel like if it was more than 20 damage times, it'd be a whole lot better because you could do this really easily by using Raichu from X and Y, doing 120 damage. And there's not enough Dragon-type Pokemon out there yet that are weak to Fairy. Uh, there's just not enough out there in general that's weak to Fairy, not even just Dragon. But if there's any other sets in the future, any other Pokemon in the future that are going to be weak to Fairy, it's just, uh, it's not good yet. It might be eventually. But right now... It's not. I just wish they would show Fairy some better love. But next we have Swirlex. Um, 60 HP for a Fairy. It does Lap Lap. Remove all special conditions from this Pokemon. And then for two colorless, Tackle does 20 damage. Then for Slurpuff, um, it has 90 HP. Ability is Tasting. You may draw one card from your deck. If this is your active Pokemon, you draw may draw one more card. You can only use this ability once per turn. Um, and then for a Fairy and two colorless, Light Wave, 60 damage during your opponent's turn. Turn, prevent all effects of attacks done to this Pokemon uh, by your opponent's Pokemon. Um, definitely a cool ability. The ability, like I said, it gives you a little bit of extra draw power. Uh, one card is better than none, and at least you don't have to discard. Empoleon had a similar effect, but you had to discard a card in order to draw. At least this one, you can just do it for free. Okay, so the only Dragon-type Pokemon in this set are the Hydreigon line, starting with Dino. 60 HP Dragon-type Pokemon for... Uh, one Psychic and a Darkness Energy, Exhaustive Bite does 20 damage, flip a coin, if heads, the attack does 10 more damage. And it's weak to fairy, but... That it is. Still, still not enough to justify it. Next we have, uh, Zwilus. Um, 90 HP for a Psychic and a Darkness, slam down 30 damage, 30 times damage, flip two coins, this attack does 30 damage times the number of heads. And finally, the stage two here, Hydreigon, Dragon-type Pokemon, 140 HP, and it has the ability Dark Advocacy. Once during your turn before you attack, you may choose one Dark Energy from your discard pile and attach it to your active Pokemon. And it's only attack here for a Psychic, a Dark, and two Colorless, which ironically is also the same as the Dark Trance Hydreigon from previous sets. Uh, does 130 damage instead of 140 from the past. Crazy Heads, discard one energy attached to this Pokemon. 
The only difference there is the old one would have you discard two energies to do 140, so they're actually quite similar cards. They both have abilities having to do with energy. It's just that this one lets you attach it to one of your active Pokemon from the discard pile, and the old one lets you move around your existing energy. Let's see, Sparrow, or Spearow, uh, 60 HP uh, for a colorless, Whirlwind, 10 damage, switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of his or her bench Pokemon. Nothing special. Simple and straightforward, the evolution of Spearow here is Fearow. Colorless Pokemon, uh, 90 HP, has two attacks, fly for a double colorless, 40 damage, flip coin if heads prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon, during your opponent's next turn, and Drill Peck does 60 damage for three colorless. Next up we have Chansey with 100 HP. It has the uh, move Nat for one colorless, heal 30 damage from uh, this Pokemon. And then for three colorless, Lucky Punch 100 damage. If you do not have seven cards in your hand, this card does nothing for this attack. Yeah, that's kind of kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, it's very bad. I feel like it should do a whole lot more damage than that for three colorless energy to rely on something as lucky as having seven cards in in uh, your hands, so. Yeah. All right, the evolution here of Chansey is Blissey. Colorless Pokemon, 130 HP, has two attacks. Payback for three colorless energy does 10 damage. Flip a coin if heads, this attack does 10 damage times the number of damage counters on your bench Pokemon. If it was a little more than 10, that might be kind of interesting if you have a lot of Pokemon on the bench that have damage. And then for four colorless energy, rush charge, 60 damage, plus 20 more uh, if you choose to then Blissey does 20 damage to itself. Um, next up we have Drafferig, which is, interestingly enough, a colorless rather than a psychic. For two colorless, Tackle does 20 damage, and for uh, three colorless, Psychic Bite, uh, 50 plus damage. If this Pokemon has any psychic energy attached to it, it does 30 more damage. So, hey, there's that psychic reference there. Yep, there it is. Yeah, I was kind of interested in the fact that it was a colorless Pokemon too, considering that it is a psychic type, but hey. It is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. All right, we'll take a look at Wismer here. Uh, 60 HP, basic colorless type Pokemon. Super Cry for one colorless. Both active Pokemon are confused. Simple enough. Next up, we have Loudred, 90 HP. Uh, for two colorless, Pound does 30 damage. And for three colorless, Energy Press does 30 plus damage. This attack does 30 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. A lot, lot like Tropius from, uh, I believe that was Plasma Blast, as a matter of fact. Okay, so the final evolution here is Exploud. Colorless, 140 HP. Stage 2 Pokemon, Boom Burst for a double colorless energy, does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, which is kind of cool for spreading around damage if your opponent has a full bench. And then for 4 colorless energy, Hyper Voice does 90 damage. Yeah, I don't imagine Hyper Voice being used often, but Boom Burst is definitely an interesting attack. Next up, we have Reggie Gigas, who is really cool bending the route sign. I think that just looks really interesting. But for uh, three colorless, it does Dawn 80 damage. During your opponent's turn, your opponent's active Pokemon's uh, attacks do 40 less damage to your active. And then for four colorless, it does Heavy Impact 100 damage. Not a very good secondary attack. Uh, Daunt is pretty decent, um, but overall just not that great. But the yeah. artwork's cool. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Regigigas has been infamous for having high attack costs that just aren't worth it overall. But then again, look how big the guy is. He needs a lot of energy to get going. I mean, his ability in the game is slow start, so what do you, what do you expect from the guy? Yep. All right, so Bunnelby, Colorless Energy, or Colorless Energy, Colorless Pokemon, 60 HP, 4, 1 Colorless, does Tackle, 10 damage, and Mud Shot, 30 damage for 3 Colorless. Um, then Diggersby, 100 HP, uh, 2 Colorless, does Smash, uh, 30 damage, flip a coin if heads, discard 1 energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, and then for 3 Colorless, it's Earthquake, uh, 80 damage, uh, does 10 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. Yeah, nope. Yeah. I agree with you there. All right. Uh, Fletchling, colorless Pokemon, 50 HP. It's the last Pokemon in the set here for Phantom Gate. Colorless, energy, you can peck for 10 damage. And for double colorless, you can use quick attack, 10 damage. Uh, flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 10 more damage. And now moving on to some of the very cool cards. We have our first trainer card, and uh, it's a Team Flare gear card. Uh, target Whistle. Choose a basic Pokemon from your opponent's discard pile and put that Pokemon onto your opponent's bench. Definitely very interesting, but hey, if it's a low HP Pokemon, can get easy knockouts if you're hitting uh, the bench for damage. Very easy target, especially some of those 30 HP Pokemon. 
Alright, so the next card we'll take a look at here is Battle Compressor. It is also an item card. Search your deck for up to three cards and discard them. Shuffle your deck afterward. I can see this having some synergy with decks that rely on energy acceleration from the discard pile. You could actually find three immediately discard them and get them back with whatever you're going to use to accelerate the energy whether it be a blacksmith you can use Maynectric to get it out of the discard pile however you can do it I can see that being good oh yeah absolutely next up we have substitute robot um, it is a Tang flare gear card as well you may play this card as a colorless 30 HP basic Pokemon as your active Pokemon you may discard this card at any time uh, during your turn this card cannot retreat and even if your opponent knocks out this Pokemon your opponent does not take a prize card if you listen to all of that this is essentially a reprinting of mysterious fossil from fossil yep that it is the only difference is is one thing that remains to be seen is if it was missed in translation or not, is whether or not it can be affected by special conditions. In the past, all Mysterious Fossil cards could not be affected by special conditions, so it would be interesting to see if the Substitute Robot, since it's not a fossil, maybe or maybe not, we're not sure yet, if it'll be able to be affected by special conditions. Okay, so the next card is very straightforward. We've heard about it already, we already know what it does. Magnetric Spirit Link Tag, all you have to do is attach this to Magnetric EX, uh, and evolve into Mega Manectric EX, and you don't lose your turn. Very and, simple. And that definitely makes Mega Evolutions worthwhile now. We just have to see it for the uh, all of the other Mega Evolutions that are already out without Spirit Link cards. Yeah, hopefully they all get them. And then, of course, if now that we have Tool Retriever, we could actually pick this right back up and attach a tool card that we really want to use to it instead. Jamming that. Uh, Team Flare's Hyper Gear. This is one of the great cards from this set. Uh, Pokemon Tool F. Attach a Pokemon Tool F to one of your opponent's Pokemon EX that doesn't already have a Pokemon Tool attached to it. Um, if it's uh, if your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out, discard this card. The Pokemon this card is attached to does 20 less damage to the defending Pokemon. If this card becomes detached, this card is discarded to the original player's discard pile. A very, very cool cards, and I can't wait to see more of these. And just the design overall is just awesome straight up red card yeah it's nice because there especially you cannot get confused as to whose card that is you know it doesn't belong to the person that's a, that it's attached to it makes it very obvious and it's also kind of cool too because it makes it essentially a reverse muscle band all right so head noiser is another one of team flares hyper gear pokemon tool f attach a pokemon tool after pokemon ex that doesn't already have a pokemon tool attached to it if that pokemon is knocked out discard this card this uh, the Pokemon this card is attached to has its energy cost increased by one colorless energy, making it that much harder for a Pokemon EX to attack. Generally, the Pokemon EX have fairly uh, low attack costs that do a lot of damage. So being able to attach Head Noiser to that Pokemon can make a world of difference. Um, you know, it just having to do that extra energy attachment slows them down for the turn. Not to mention, you can take advantage of Jamming Net or Head Noiser and attach them to your opponent's Pokemon and then be able to attack with Manectric EX and do that extra 60 damage since it requires your opponent's Pokemon to have a tool card attached to it already. And when you do it this way, you're attaching cards to your opponent's Pokemon that they don't even want or make use out of. It actually hurts them twice by doing more damage and also the negative effects of those cards. Next up we have AZ. Um... He is a supporter. Uh, choose one of your Pokemon and return that Pokemon and it's attached pre-evolutions to your hand. Discard all other cards attached to that Pokemon. No, I mean, if you want to do that, you can use Super Scoop Up or Scoop Up Cyclone for that matter and do the same exact thing. All right, so the next trainer card we've got here, supporter, is Zorosic. Uh Choose one special energy or Pokemon tool from your uh, Pokemon or your opponent's Pokemon and discard it. I can see this being decent if you want to get your own tools or special energies picked up, but I don't really know why you would want to with Tool Retriever in the previous set. Um, essentially this is like combining Team Flare Grunt and uh, Tool Scrapper into one card, except for it's a supporter, and you can only use one supporter per turn, so it seems like it might be kind of a waste, but I'm sure it has its use, or at least will have its use in the future. Yeah, the only thing that I can imagine it being used for is if you're getting a Tool F card off of your own Pokemon. But I'm not even sure what the ruling with that will be, so we'll just have to see in the future when people are actually using these cards. Um, next up we have Lysander's Last Resort. Just a great card in my opinion. Both players shuffle all cards from their discard pile back into their deck, excluding any Lysander's Last Resorts. 
very, very cool card. Essentially just making deck outs impossible now. Of course, we've got uh, the obligatory Popper Roach reference here. Cut my life into pieces, Lysander's last resort. Had to be said, I can't help it. All right, so we'll take a look here at this Dimensional Valley Stadium card. It's the only stadium card in this set, but it's a good one. Each player's psychic Pokemon pays one colorless energy less to attack. As you recall, earlier when I mentioned the Zubat, Golbat, and Crobat, all only requiring to use one colorless energy, I said that they could attack for free with a certain card. Well, this is it right here. A bunch of the psychic Pokemon have colorless energy in their attacks, and being able to pay one less is definitely a good thing. I mean, even if your opponent happens to play a head noiser on you, then instead of pay, play, uh, instead of paying the original energy cost, you drop one because of the stadium and just add it right back, and you're just paying whatever it was to begin with, so it doesn't hurt you there. It's more helpful than anything. Right, and um, it, you know, it's definitely good with uh, Mega Gengar EX as well, just to make it only two energy attachments, so you don't have to um, have the three or have to run double colorless at all, so it definitely makes uh, Mega Gengar a little bit better as well. Um, next up we have Mystery Energy, which is the last um, card for the Japanese set, technically, besides the secret rares. Um, this card can only be attached to a Psychic Pokémon. This provides Psychic Energy only while this card is attached to a Psychic Pokémon. The retreat cost of a, Pokemon, uh, a Psychic Pokémon this card is attached to is two colorless less. I don't imagine it being very useful. I mean, if you, if there are other psychic Pokemon with very high retreat costs, I mean, usually people are just going to want to use Floatstone anyways, but uh, hey, I guess it's okay. It looks cool nonetheless. Yeah, unless you're facing a deck that punishes you for having uh, special energy attached to it, like a Drift Blim, for instance, um, you know, or Cobalion that uh, its first attack forces you to discard an energy card, a special energy card with its attack. That's the only reason why I would see maybe avoiding using this card. Right. All right, so I guess all we have left here are the full arts, and we're, we already know what they all do. We'll just kind of bring them up on the screen here to show you. Um, here's uh, Manectric EX. It's full art. looks beautiful. And then the Gengar EX, honestly, one of the best uh, full arts ever. I thought they were going to kind of ruin it because I liked the, uh, you know, gelatinous blob color background thing, but they just made it look extremely epic. Yeah, coming out of that vortex, it looks awesome. All right, the next full art card that we're going to take a look at is going to be the Full Art Malamar, which I'll get up on the screen here shortly, there we go. Which I think that this is probably the coolest card, the way that it looks in detailing. Um, I feel like they really detailed Malamar's features and made them all stand out with that gold bordering around it. He looks quite evil, and if you remember the uh, episode more recently in the X and Y where Malamar was featured, he looks exactly like that Malamar, just portrays that sinister evilness behind him, and I think it's just awesome. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now we uh, have uh, Florgis EX. Um, I just think it's a very pretty card. Like It's so colorful. Um, I just wish it were better, but um, hey, hopefully it will have its spot in the future when we have more things that are weak to fairy. Yes, it definitely portrays a, uh, a look of elegance nonetheless. So we'll move on to our Full Art supporters here, who have AZ here, who has the little tiny Pokeball in his hand just to portray how huge this guy really is. And then we have uh, Zero Sick, um, very epic looking card. I just love the angles that they have on this uh, on these Full Arts recently, especially with the trainers in them. It definitely looks uh, very, very cool. Okay, well, the most epic Full Art supporter, in my opinion, is right here. The Lysander's Last Resort. It really looks like he's just, yeah, he's going for it right here. This, this is it right here, you know? It, just awesome detailing. Definitely captured the moment of being a last resort for certain. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then lastly, we'll just cover both of these right away because we've already seen them. Our secret rares, or what will be our secret rares, are the gold-bordered Mega Evolutions. Sadly, we did not get anything special. We didn't get a full art Mega Evolution. We didn't get shiny Mega Evolutions. We're just stuck with the gold border, gold text. Very boring and just doesn't make it feel special at all because you can hardly notice the gold border anyways. Yep, you can notice the gold lettering. On Gengar a little bit more prominently than you can on Manetric, but Manetric is, an, is a yellow card to begin with, as you stated to me earlier. It just, it's completely unnoticeable. Yeah, it's just not that great. Now we're moving on to the last cards that aren't in the set, but will be in our set. 
um, the Dialga EX and H slash EX. Yep, the Dialga EX here, 100 HP, metal type Pokemon, uh, has two attacks, Chrono Wind for a metal energy and a double colorless to 60 damage, and if the opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon EX, it can't attack during your opponent's next turn. Uh, I think that's the first time we've seen an attack on an EX that says another EX can't attack. We've seen non-EX Pokemon say that a Pokemon EX cannot attack you, but that's the first time I think I've seen an EX with that same attack. And then for two Metal Energy and two Colorless, Full Metal Impact does 150 damage, but you have to discard two Metal Energies attached to this Pokemon in order to use it. Yeah, so that's very costly, but definitely uh, something uh, that has synergy with another card in this set. Yeah, and not um, to mention it's Metal Type instead of Dragon Type this time. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, now we have Aegislash EX, 170 HP, with the ability Mighty Shield. And this is uh, where we were talking about the punishment for using special energy. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attack from your opponent's Pokemon that have any special energy attached to them. So definitely enough. De definitely a good card if you're uh, running special energy, which most people do. Yep. Um, then for three colorless um, slash blast does 40 plus damage, does 20 more damage for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. Basically, Keldeo EX with 10 less attack and with metal energy. Um, we've got Bronzor and Bronzong here. Bronzor by itself, 50 HP, uh, metal energy, tackle for 10 damage, but then Bronzong here uh, evolves from Bronzor, has the ability Metal Chain. There's no picture of it here. But uh, once during your turn, you may choose one metal energy from your discard pile and attach it to one of your benched Pokemon. So just simply for the energy acceleration alone, this makes it a lot like um, electric from uh, black and white, except for metal form instead of electric. Uh, now we have Verse Seeker, a trainer item card. Uh, search your discard for uh, uh, discard pile for a supporter card. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. Nothing too special, it's just essentially um, Pal Pad, except you only get one supporter card, but at least you get it into your hand. Yep, instead of shuffling it back into your deck. I'd rather put one in my hand than two in my deck. Steel Shelter here is a stadium card. Remove all special conditions from metal Pokemon in play, and metal Pokemon cannot be affected by special conditions. Straightforward, very cool. Not being able to be affected by special conditions, it's Verizian EX in stadium form for metal types. And then our very last card, Dialga EX, which is going to be what is known in our set as the Full Metal Dialga EX. Just pretty nice card. I mean, if you can actually see the detailing, I mean, the picture might be a little bit off, but just a full straight up card looks like it's made out of metal. Same attacks as the other Dialga. And it goes right along with the Reshiram and Zekrom full art gold cards from Legendary Treasures, except for now we're going with metal instead of gold. All right, well, that about covers all the card scans available in Japan for this set. As always, the English set being Phantom Forces, uh, we will have some additional cards that the Japanese set did not have. So we hope you enjoyed our video, focusing on the cards we believe will have the most co uh, competitive use in the current metagame, and uh, just in general are cool. So um, be sure to uh, check out the Pokemon Evolutionaries. They have some great content over there, and, you know... Uh, just great guys and make sure you uh like comment and subscribe uh, as well over to poketopia you know for my viewers be sure to check them out both of us will have corresponding links in the uh, description down below to each other's channels and just make sure you guys comment uh, down below what cards you think will have the biggest impact in the competitive metagame and what cards you like from the set in general we'd like to hear your opinions what you hear from us is just our opinions so what you guys have to offer is definitely just as valuable as what we have to say so thank you all so much for watching and uh, we appreciate all of your feedback and support as always so all of you have a great day yeah. Oh, 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 oh,